Okay, good afternoon guys. Um, to start off, if everybody can get out like a piece of paper or something to write with very fast. We're going to start out with a series of questions and then have you choose an answer if you're ready. Seconds. 
Now if we can get to your attention back up here. Um, so just initially, um, what are some of your guys' thoughts as you're reading, as you read through? What were some stuff that stood out to you guys from what you read? Teacher. You think it's the teacher is responsible? I, yeah, that's what I said. Okay. Because like the students are independent of the teacher. And like, you know, if this teacher's understanding, you understand how the students are going on or some students are have different things. So I think that's why they Okay. Anybody have? I feel like if there's, what do you think? I don't know if there's an exact saying on whose fault it is, there's a whole bunch of different factors that can contribute to if a child is failing, like say like different upbringings at a home, you be your parents are drinking or whatever, those things can affect your children's learning, as well as what if they didn't graduate from high school, what if they don't know how to help their students because they don't know how, you know, that could be the parents' fault, but it couldn't be because what do you expect, you know, there's different okay. points of view. Uh, Sorry, I lost it. Okay. <laughs> um, I just liked this little part on, um, I don't know, it says teachers are responsible to an extent and I think it's almost like a 50 50 like teachers should be held accountable for their students learning but only to an extent and teachers should not be evaluated solely on students test scores. Scores for example, the evaluation process should include the teacher's ability to plan and lead instruction, the teacher's interactions with other teachers and administrators. Blah, blah, all that stuff. I feel like it's like a conjoint effort to like support the child. It's not just like the parent should put all the like responsibility on the teacher because the student is at home part of the time they do like homework. The parents should So do you think like the age has a factor on that? Like someone who's in elementary school versus a high schooler who's responsible? Okay. Um, yeah. I was just gonna say that I think as a teacher, yes, we have responsibility, you know, be prepared and all these things, you know, and the way we learn and take it. But um, I think that there's a certain extent so you can do, you know, like there's just, there's just a limit, I guess, you know. There's things that, you know, the, you know, the circumstances that the students are living might not be, you know, the best ones, and like you really can control that. So if, I, if you know, you can, you're doing your best, but still the students aren't learning. Yeah, no. Uh, she brings up a good point. Um, I want to go back to what she was saying about the factors that influence students. So, what are what factors do you think? What are some of the major factors you think that cause students to fail? Problems at home. Okay. What are some of those? Huh? Okay, poverty. Okay, anyone else? What are some other factors? Uh huh. Actually, so on that second article, the one that's not the New York Times, I think in the second page there's someone who talks about friends and the influence they have on students' family. Okay. What are some other ones? Cultural diversity, students with second language learners. Mm -hmm. Okay, so of these factors, um, what impact, what, you know, who has the most, uh, I'd say, capability of changing or helping these factors? Is it parent, the teacher, or the student? What do you guys think? Your child, if you really care about your child's education, and if you realize that there's some things that you can't do for them, and you bring it up with the teacher, and you guys discuss things, then you you can come up to a solution to best help your child. So I think there's some common ground that can be found with both of them, so that they can better help. Okay. Sometimes that's not always the case. Sometimes parents don't really care, and teacher does. Yeah. So from my experience, with my kids, um, I my daughter had a teacher last year. She was really intimidated by her. My daughter's actually really smart, but she couldn't perform in class because she was scared of her teacher. Like she was doing really, really bad. Um, and I went to the principal and was like, hey, I, my daughter does the big stuff, and she's too scared to perform in class. And they wouldn't take her out of the class. And so I think to me, there, see, uh, as a parent, 
parent, I care, I, I'm trying to help her, but she can do it at home, but in school she's not performing, and it's because of the teacher, so in that case, I think it's all based on the teacher, because it wasn't anybody else in class with the teacher, she was intimidated by the, the teacher being, I was just the presence of the teacher, the way the teacher interacted with the students, even as parents going in there, she was really disrespectful to parents as well, so it's just, it's yeah, so like, granted you're going to have different situations. You're going to have situations where it's very clear cut. Where, okay, like that one is pretty obvious it's the teachers. Then when a, te when a parent doesn't, isn't involved, it's kind of obvious it's the parent. But I want to go back to what she was saying about that and with the New York Times article. It talks about a few... Um, a few laws that they're, like, no, that they're kind of thinking about, that they're proposing, to where it's, there's one where it's pretty much the teachers give the student and the teacher a grade. So, huh? Oh, yeah, student and parent, sorry. So student and parent a grade. Um, or, you know, you have the fines if the student doesn't go to class after so, you know, so many days. And, what do you guys think about that? You guys think that's valuable to kind of put a little bit more pressure on the parents, or do you think it's ridiculous? I think that would cause a lot of You know, there's some parents that they're definitely that neglecting their kids and all that, but you know, there's definitely parents that they're completely opposite. You know, they do whatever they can to get them to school and to do everything. And, you know, if I don't think it's right, you know, if you find them or something like that, I think it's just Okay. Well, also, it, like, what does that say to the students? Like, what does that very true. But do you guys think that their parents need to take more responsibility for their student? For, or, because we went over those situations where, you know, kids were coming to class, they were doing their homework, and the teacher would try to contact the parent, and they wouldn't respond. So should there be something? And what do you guys think? What are some possible solutions to the problem? I mean, you definitely need something for those people who are neglecting their kids, but I think it's just hard, you know, to, to pass a law because it's something that's going to apply, you know, generally to everyone. So, the situation is different. Yeah. So it's like it's, everything's just going to depend. Like, yeah. I agree with that. Like, especially with the fighting, I feel like. I don't know, I didn't know, my cousin taught at a school, a magnet school in East New York, where they would send kids that were having mothers that were prostitutes and never knew their fathers, or fathers were like drug dealers, or they never knew like a different kind of life. And so they sent them to this magnet school, and the whole purpose of this school was to get them to be in an environment that would allow them to feel like college and education was an opportunity for them, because it was, they never knew anything like that. It was just so boring. And when I think of that situation and think of finding the parents by the end of the day, I think of, well, what about those moms that are working the streets, like hustling, and that's their way of getting their money for their kids, and they can't get them to school the next day, and because, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like you can't let animals and you can't put a general rule out for everything like that, especially if you're fighting. Do you have a comment? No. No? Yeah. Can I agree with what they say? Like, Finding, I don't think, is a good approach to handling the situation because 
Not everyone has money. Yeah. Do that, and everyone has a re different reasons why their kid was late to school. Like, you know, maybe they got caught in the cash, or maybe <laughs> like things like that. Like they, little things. Everything varies, and so I don't think like climbing would be a big solution. Okay, so um, just kind of bringing an end to the discussion. Um, you know, we all kind of have different thoughts, but I kind of felt like everyone kind of generally agreed that it's both the teacher's and the parent's responsibility. And that, um, as as teachers, we need to be sure that we're doing our end, that we're doing our half. And um, so now I want you to pair with someone and discuss what you think us as educators can do to help motivate our students to be the best they can be in the classroom. And I want you to kind of put yourself in the situation of a teacher who you're talking with a student whose parents aren't really happy. You can tell that they're, that the parents aren't really doing So what can you do as a teacher? The parents aren't doing their half. Students struggling. What can you do as a teacher? So just discuss with your